or as chief executive offer rather for, rather for that time. And here to discuss auto stocks and much more like today's Dow intraday high is our friend, the CEO of the Stock Swoosh, Melissa Arma. Melissa, welcome. We haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. We're so pleased to have you back. What do you make of the market moves today? Uh, it just breached over that 27,000, right? Well, we got up close to it. We didn't get over it. We, we almost touched it. We didn't quite get there. We got so close, though, and it looks like we're going to get there. But I will tell you really quickly, we closed off of that high. So there, the interest rates, I think, spooked the market later in the afternoon. Bond rates touched around 3.14% intraday. And so because of that, the market sold off a little bit after 2 o'clock this afternoon. But all in all, we did get close to 27,000 in the Dow. We broke new records today. And the market overall is very very bullish going into the fall period here now. It's the first week of October. Earnings season starts next week. The big banks report next week. So it's going to be a very exciting time to, to watch the market. Which, uh, which are the big ones you'll be looking for next week, Melissa? JP Morgan Chase is one of the big ones out next week. And of course, Wells Fargo City. Those, those are all the big banks to watch in Goldman Sachs, although I'm not sure if Goldman reports next week. I have to check the date. The biggest, though, earnings week to watch is not coming up until the end of the month. It's when Apple reports and Amazon and Google and Amazon reports on the 25th. So that last week of October, first week of November is the busiest when you have the tech companies. But it starts next week. So next week is the launch of the earnings season with the big banks. And you should see some movement. So again, with interest rates rising, you have have the bank stocks rallying and that is one of the reasons also why you've had the lift in the market and we'll also have i guess we'll have on friday the jobs report too so we'll also be looking toward that see if that has any impact i guess if it's just about the same a couple hundred thousand jobs not much but uh, maybe there's an outlier there that could move markets uh, melissa let's move to uh, auto stocks in particular uh, you know it's not that big a deal i guess that the car sales were down in september if it is in fact as the analysts say due to uh, the surge in people going out because their cars had flooded in, in louisiana and, and texas because of uh, hurricane harvey but gm 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 motors was the one that took the largest loss uh, give us a little bit about their stock. What have they been doing lately? Honestly, that stock does not look good at all. I would not say it's a buy right now. That stock has been dropping. That stock, General Motors, is in a downtrend. I don't know what's going to turn that around right now. And it's the same thing with Tesla. Tesla stock doesn't look that great either. Even though it had a big jump up on that news that you discussed uh, with Elon Musk, it, it, it bumped up 50 points from that, but it's still hanging, and that stock dropped today. And when you have the market at new highs, and you have these these auto companies like General Motors and Tesla that are trading lower, that doesn't that doesn't look good. I wouldn't say that I buy either one of those stocks right now. Yes, it might, there is a decline definitely from the last quarter records, but typically the best time to buy a car isn't into the end of the year winter period. That's when you get the best deals. So there, we may have some different numbers come the end of the season here. Let me ask you a little bit more on Tesla. And, you know, look, they were uh, he was sort of the, you know, the golden child. I mean, he has been. He's got SpaceX. He's got all these things going on. And and uh, but he was constantly upset by the sh uh, the shorts, uh, by the guys going short on the uh, guys and gals going short on Tesla, saying that it wasn't going to make it. Uh, and then he issued that tweet saying the the funding was secured, which it, you know the SEC found there was no uh, funding secured, which is why they they went after him. But had that not happened, Melissa. Uh, you know, they had the production problems, but now that they've overcome that, uh, do you think had that not hap happened and he wasn't, you know, smoking something nefarious on TV not long ago, uh, <laughs> wouldn't that have really put Tesla stock in, uh, for lack of a better phrase, the driver's seat? Right. They had this huge production number, over 80,000 cars. That This is the news that came out that created the bump up in the stock. I think if he hadn't said what he did or tweeted what he did, then maybe the stock would have held on. It could have been back up at the highs. Even today, the way it's trading is nowhere near the highs. The previous high in Tesla, which it retested after that tweet before they realized he really didn't have the funding, was around 387. So that's we're far off the highs today. So yes, we this, the stock itself would have performed better, I believe, had he not had this tweet and had he not had these issues and clearly it cost him personal money and it cost the, the, the company money too because they had to pay the fine. Hopefully this is the end of it and it's over and done with it. They can just move forward and continue with production and, and have a, a good quarterly earnings report at the end of this year too. And real quickly, Melissa, when are we going to, I thought we had gone over uh, uh, the, uh, the, the 27,000. I was looking earlier and it was so close. Uh, but so what's your close. prediction? Yeah. Going to happen tomorrow, the next day, next week? What do you think? 
Well, here's the thing, and this is, you were talking about the ACON that's coming out on Friday morning. Don't forget the political stuff, Bart. This is a big couple of days here for politics in the United States and with everything that's happening with the Kavanaugh hearing. So I, I think it's there's a twofold. The numbers that are coming out on Friday, the market retesting the highs or going over the highs and the down, retesting the highs at the S&P. And plus, you have all this political hubbub that's going on. So anything could happen. The next two days, Thursday and Friday, in the U.S. markets could be a very volatile period, meaning we could have a big move up or we could drop off here after this big move up because I don't really know the outcome of the numbers Friday and I don't know if they're going to confirm Kavanaugh or even have the vote by Friday, which they're planning on doing, but who knows if it'll happen. The always informative and entertaining Melissa Armo, the CEO of the Stock Swoosh. Thanks, Melissa. Good to see you. Good to see you.